Hello, everyone. My name's Andrew. And my name is Jeremy. And you are listening to Culips. Welcome back to Culips. This is a Chatterbox episode. If you're unfamiliar with Chatterbox, well, it's the Culips series where we have completely natural English conversations and we let you listen in. Today, I'm joined by my co host, Jeremy. Hey there, Jeremy. What's up? Oh, nothing much. Just recording another Culips episode with my friend Andrew. <laughs> What are we talking about today, Jeremy? So, today we are going to talk about how to express your opinions about art and movies and other things like this. But before we do that, we should let everybody know about the study guide so they can follow along as they listen today. That's right. In the study guide, everyone, there is a transcript, there are detailed vocabulary explanations and examples, and there's a quiz, and there are some prompts that you can use for writing or speaking practice as well. It's a great resource to complement your English studies, and we would encourage you to check it out. There are free study guide samples on our website, culips.com. So if you want to see what kind of material is included in the study guide, you could visit culips.com and check that out. And then if you would like to get unlimited access to our study guide library for every episode, you simply need to sign up and become a Culips member. So, Jeremy, let's get into it here. We are going to talk about how to talk about art, how to talk about movies and music and the kind of artwork that enriches our lives. And this topic was suggested to us by one of our listeners, and she sent us an email, which I will read for everyone now. It says, Hi, Culips. My name is Somang Lee, living in Korea, and my English name is Hope. Anyway, I'm a big fan of the Culips podcast. I always tune in to Culips, and I'm glad that I can listen to this high quality podcast. Your content is always good. Sometimes it's hard for me to express my emotion and report how I feel after looking at art and listening to music. For example, someone asked me, How do you feel after looking at that picture or listening to this song? And I always answer, Oh, this song is so sad. Or the high pitch of the song makes me feel thrilled. Or that art is like, I don't know, but I guess if it were up for auction, it would be sold at a high price. It looks expensive. But I don't think this is right. I don't know how to describe my feelings because I'm not familiar with this topic. So, would you please deal with how to express emotion and what effective words are in reporting about art, music, and literature? Once again, I'm a huge fan and look forward to listening to all of your episodes. Okay, so Hope, great question. Thank you very much. First, we should say, Jeremy, that I think hope is on the right track here. I think responding that way is not a terrible way to respond. I really liked that comment like, if this painting were sold at auction, it would sell for a high price. I think that's a great way to talk about the beauty of art. Yeah, you can say that again. And Jeremy, actually, that is one of The tips that you have for hope today, isn't it? And that is that we can use metaphor and simile to describe our emotions in reaction to different works of art. Yeah. I think a lot of times people use、uh, a metaphor or a simile to explain their feelings because usually. Feelings are difficult to express in words in general. For example, if I saw a photo, I might say something like, Oh, it reminds me of a butterfly. 
or it makes me feel like I'm all wet. I use the word like to draw a comparison between another feeling and the feeling I have when I see the painting or listen to the song or something like that. Right. So just to back up and explain quickly here, a simile is a kind of metaphor. A metaphor is a comparison. So you're comparing one thing to another thing. And uh, specifically, a simile is a comparison using the word like or the word as. So when Jeremy said, oh, I feel like blah, blah, blah. When I look at this painting, this is a kind of simile. Or I feel as, you know, I look at this painting and I feel as if I am in the jungle with the, the animals that are in the painting. It's realistic in this way. This would be another type of simile. Yeah, really, there is an endless variety of comparisons you could make with any one piece of art. So rather than give people specific expressions to use, I would say they should just try to make a simile of their own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the more obscure and random the simile is, the more pretentious you will sound. And the more pretentious you will sound, the more of an expert <laughs> you will sound like. If that's what you're looking for, you are exactly right. And I don't know if this is true for every language, but definitely in English, uh, people can sound very pretentious when talking about art because they use obscure metaphors and comparisons when talking about art and it, it makes them sound like they know what they're talking about. Maybe they don't in reality. It's hard to say. You can also simply explain the emotion that the thing makes you feel. Like there are some songs that make me feel very sad when I hear them. And there are other songs that make me feel very excited. So you can say, oh, it makes me sad. Seeing this painting or listening to that song makes me feel sad. I feel like the artist must be in great pain. And actually, this is another thing that I think we do in English. We, we make comments about the artist or the person who created the piece of art. So we say, oh, he was a genius or she was a revolutionary, things like this. We make comments about the artists themselves, the people behind the artwork. Right. So that is our second tip for everyone is to not focus on the art or the movie or the music, but to focus on the context behind the artwork, right? So as Jeremy mentioned, you could talk about the artist and comment on the artist's context when he or she was making the art. Or you could talk about the time period when the art was created, the historical context. That is another way to comment uh, and express your opinions and feelings of the art without necessarily saying, oh, I feel depressed when I look at this painting, right? You could say, oh, maybe, wow, 200 years ago when this painting was made, it must have been such a difficult time to live in. There's no electricity. There are, people were starving. It was difficult, right? That is a different way to comment and talk about the art, but without just making a basic sentence like, I feel depressed when I look at it. Yeah, sometimes that's just not enough. And I think Somang was commenting about that in her letter to us. She felt like her simple expressions weren't enough to capture her feeling or to capture the artwork. All right. The third tip that we have for you here today is to focus on a specific part 
of the art that you want to talk about. So instead of just saying what your general reaction to the art is, you could focus in on one narrow part and talk about that. So if you watched a movie that you thought was really awesome, maybe you could talk about the directing or you could talk about the costumes or you could talk about the colors in the movie. So instead of talking about it as a whole, just focus on one specific part and mention that. You know, I have uh, a lot of friends who are musicians and we talk about music all the time. And we often talk about music in this way. We don't say, oh, that song's great. Instead, we focus more on the guitar tone. Wow, I love the guitar tone in this song. I wonder how the guitarist configured his amplifier to get that sound. Or we talk about the drums or the mixing on the record. Or sometimes the person's voice. Some singers these days have very unique voices. They, they can reverberate their skull when they sing to make a different note sometimes. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is quite common these days. So you can comment on the voice or something unique about the singer uh, as well. Absolutely. I, I completely agree with you there, Jeremy. And I guess to wrap it up here, we will leave our listeners with one final tip, our fourth tip for today. And that is that if you want to learn how English speakers talk about art, about movies, about paintings, about literature, then you need to put yourself into the environment where English speakers are talking about these things. Now, this is maybe not possible to do in real life if you live in a country where there are no English speakers, but you can do this through podcasts, through online magazines and newspapers, through YouTube. So just watch and listen to and read the kind of content where people are discussing these topics and you'll pick up the vocabulary. You'll pick up the expressions that English speakers use when talking about art. For example, someone could search YouTube for fine art reviews. Review videos are very common on YouTube and when people review things, they use all of these kinds of expressions to express their opinion about that thing. So movie reviews or music reviews or art or painting reviews. I don't know if that is a good term or not, but it's a good place to start. For art, I would suggest searching for art criticism because... Ah, good one. Because for whatever reason, the art world is a little bit more pretentious. As I mentioned, we don't use the word reviews to talk about art. We talk about art criticism. So you could search for that on the internet and find tons of content that will help you learn how to understand and to talk about this subject. Great. So everyone, to summarize what we covered here today, the first tip we had for you is to use metaphors and similes when talking about art and music and films. The second tip is to comment about the artist's background or the historical context in which the art was created. Our third tip is to focus on one specific part that you found moving or troubling or depressing. Maybe it's the lighting, maybe it's the directing, maybe it's the brushwork, maybe it's the color, something like that. And finally, our fourth tip is to expose yourself to English content where you will hear people speak about the art that you also want to talk about. So that brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you guys for listening. We hope you learned a lot with us today. If you like Q-Lips, if you listen to us often, 
please support us, you could do that by becoming a QLoops member on our website, QLoops.com, by following us on social media, or by telling your friends about QLoops. You can also try using some of these tips today to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. You can try using some of these expressions or ways of expressing your opinion to write a review of Culips. If you would like to send us an email, just like Hope did, then please do. We love hearing from you. Our email address is contact at culips.com. We will be back soon with another brand new episode and we'll talk to you then. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.